Hi, this is Mr. Kabuski. Uh, we're going to talk about Unit 2, Section 2, which is all about properties of water. Uh, I'm going to run through the notes uh, that you'll see here on the screen uh, pretty much without talking a whole lot. I'm just going to kind of go through each slide and then feel free to pause as you go. I need to get through this a little bit quicker. <laughs> I'm running out of time. But in order to do the notes today, we're going to do them just a little bit differently. Uh, I just like to kind of keep things a little shaken up. I know some of you prefer just regular paper pencil notes and uh, no nonsense, no no thrills, no frills. But sometimes I like to do things a little bit differently, just to just to say that you know, just to try it, see maybe you know, find out something works better for you or for me or who knows. Okay. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take uh, four half sheets of paper. Okay, of the you're gonna use the like hamburger cut, uh, that kind of size, and you're gonna stagger them. Uh, so that there's about, I don't know, centimeter, centimeter, centimeter and a half between each one, okay? Once you've done that then, okay, I'll show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to fold this backwards and fold the bottom up or the top down, however you want to look at it, so that I get another four sets of colors, okay, with the two in the middle matching, okay? They shouldn't overlap, but I should have a, a ridge at each one, okay? And then I crease that and fold it, and when I'm done, I should get something like this, okay? I should get something like this. Now, here's what's going to happen. To start, okay, you're going to go to the back side after you've stapled the top, okay, to keep it all together. On the back side, I want you to put what's on the screen right here, okay? Start with formula H2O, draw your picture, water is polar, only mixes blah, blah, blah with polar substances, okay? That goes on the back. Flip back to the front. As we click through the slides here, okay, you'll notice that I've highlighted a word, so hydrogen bond. So this is going to be the title, which goes at the bottom of the first color okay let me show you what I mean here okay so I would put hydrogen bonding right here along the bottom and then I would put all the information on the slide right here across the top once I've done that one I would flip to the next page okay and I'll put solutions at the bottom here and then I'll put all this information and pictures and things like that right in the middle okay that's how that's gonna work let's get rid of my ugly mug see you okay so hydrogen bonding you can read a little bit about that it's important <clears throat> because it's that attraction of the positive and negative ends. Uh, that attraction is going to actually cause some of these other properties to take place. Uh, you'll notice that hyd uh, hydrogens are unevenly distributed on the oxygen. Uh, they end up near the top of it. kind of looks like Mickey Mouse's head is the way I like to think of it. But anyways, <clears throat> it's, that, it's that arrangement that causes the top of the water molecule to have a positive charge and the bottom to have a negative. We want to get real fancy and talk about chemistry terms. What happens is the electrons of hydrogen get pulled closer to the center of oxygen because there's so oxygen is so much bigger that it's it, the nucleus tends to be a little bit exposed, and the only thing that's in the nucleus of a hydrogen atom is a proton. So that's why that ends up having a positive charge on the top. But the advantage of that then is that it is attracted to other uh, water molecules, and then they can kind of start to stick together. And that's like I said, going to cause some of these other properties. Okay. The next one is solutions. Water is an excellent solvent, and that's because it is polar, because it has that positive negative end. It can actually pull apart uh, other molecules that, uh, that end up inside it. The stuff that goes inside water, if water is a solvent, it's called a solute. So think about your Kool-Aid mix. When you pour it in there, it's like powdery or whatever. That's the solute. The water is the solvent. We put them together to get a solution. Here's that water attraction to itself. That's known as cohesion. This is why water forms droplets and water tends to stay together. If you've done the Penny Lab, which we're gonna do a similar one like that on Monday, uh, that was because of cohesion. That's what causes the bubbling of the water. It causes it to, to, to hang out the sides. It's because that attraction of the water molecules is stronger than the pull of the gravity because of the weight. Now, as I add more water droplets, it becomes heavier, and so that uh, attraction is weaker than the weight, and so it ball, that bubble falls apart. Cohesion at work would be surface tension. That would be an example of cohesion at work. Uh, if I lay a paper clip flat along the surface of water, it should lay there right on the surface. If I pointed it straight up and down and tried to put it through, though, it would go straight through. And that's because the weight is evenly distributed across. And if the weight is not greater okay, than the attraction of the water molecules to one another, then it sits on the surface. This is why you can throw a rock and have it skip across a pond. This is how water bugs are able to walk across water and things like that. Adhesion is when water sticks to other things. So here we have adhesion and cohesion together. Adhesion would be the water droplets sticking to each other instead of just being a flat surface. And then uh, assuming that would be cohesion. And then adhesion would be them sticking to the surface of your car. Adhesion is that annoying thing that causes water to run down your glass when you try to tip it and pour it into something else. Capillary action. 
Uh, this is how plants actually get water to the tops of trees and the tops of their stems. Uh, the water actually has the ability to climb upwards using that adhesion and cohesion. It sticks to the sides and it sticks to itself and it just kind of keeps working its way up the, the stem of the plant. Oh, I'm running out of time. Acids and bases, that's when uh, water is actually disassociated, meaning it breaks apart. You get a hydroxyl ion over here, which is negative, and a hydrogen ion, which is positive. If you have more hydrogen ions, then you become an acid. If you have more hydroxyls, you're a base. Okay, and you can read some of the descriptions about them. Important thing is water is a is a neutral. It has a number of seven, and then everything above seven is basic. Everything below seven is an acid.